Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, today I have decided to uh, dive deep into a few stories of hope and inspiration that shows how much uh, HIV care and uh, research and therapy has evolved. And uh, I hope that if you watch this video till the end, you'll end up inspired. With that... Welcome back, friends. There have been several notable cases of individuals with HIV who achieved remission or a functional cure through bone marrow transplants from donors with a specific mutation known as CCR5 Delta 32. This mutation renders immune cells resistance to certain strains of HIV. Here's a summary of some of these cases. First, the Berlin patient, Timothy Ray Brown. Timothy Ray Brown, often referred to as the Berlin patient, is the first and most famous case of HIV cure via a bone marrow transplant. He had both HIV and leukemia. In 2007, he underwent a bone marrow transplant from a donor with CCR5 Delta 32 mutation to treat his leukemia. Remarkably, after the transplant, Timothy's HIV levels became undetectable and he remained free of the virus uh, without the need for antiretroviral therapy and he was considered functionally cured of HIV. Timothy Ray Brown sadly passed away in 2020 due to other causes. But his case remains a landmark in HIV research. Next, we have the London patient, Adam Costello. In 2019, another case similar to Tim uh, Timothy Ray Brown's was reported, known as the London case or Adam Castillo. Adam had HIV and was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. He received a, a bone marrow transplant from a donor with the CCR5 Delta 32 mutation. Like Timothy, Adam's HIV went into remission and he stopped taking ART. His case was considered a second instance of an HIV cure with a bone marrow transplant. And next we have the Dusseldorf patient. In 2020, a third case emerged, often referred to as a Dusseldorf patient. This individual also had HIV and blood cancer, which was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And he received a bone marrow transplant from a CCR5 Delta 32 donor. And uh, following the transplant, the patient experienced sustained HIV, HIV remission without the need for art. Next, let's, uh, let's move on to the case of the City of Hope patient. In 2022, a 66-year-old man who wished to remain uh, uh, anonymous at that time was the fourth case to be cured of HIV. The 66-year-old man was living with HIV and leukemia and is now in remission from both the virus and blood cancer following a successful stem cell transplant from a donor who possessed an extremely rare genetic mutation. Dr. Jana, City of Hope Associate Clinical Professor in the Division of Infectious Diseases, said that this case shows if clinicians can find the correct stem cell donor, they can potentially use newer, more advanced and less intense chemotherapy regimen options uh, that are uh, better in, uh, tolerated for older patients, in addition to the hope that there is a potential for dual remission from both diseases for these specific patients. He's now identified, this particular patient is now identified as Paul Edmonds. He has decided to reveal his identity and he has done a few uh, TV interviews as well. In 2023, we have what we uh, call as the Geneva patient who is still anonymous and he is the fifth pa uh, patient to be cured. Uh, in uh, 2018, the Geneva patient similarly received a stem cell transplant to treat particularly aggressive form of leukemia, but this time the transplant came from a donor who did not carry the CCR5 mutation. This means that the virus is still able to enter the patient's cell. However, 20 months after the man stopped taking antiretroviral treatment, which reduces the amount of HIV in the blood, doctors at Geneva University uh, hospitals have not found a trace of the virus in his system. The researchers uh, felt that while they cannot rule out the man's HIV will return uh, later, uh, they believe that um, uh, he is probably in long-term remission. And as per, uh, as per the doctors uh, familiar with this case, there, there were a couple of possible explanations for why the Geneva patient remains HIV free even though he did not get a CCR5 uh, mutated uh, bone marrow. In this specific case, perhaps the transplant eliminated all the infected cells 
without the need uh, for the famous mutation. Or maybe his immunosuppressive uh, treatment, uh, which was required before the transplant, uh, uh, during the transplant, uh, played a role in killing off the HIV virus. They are still investigating, and we may get some uh, new insights into how to control this virus. Friends, I have had some viewers uh, over the years ask me how much it will cost for a bone marrow transplant. Well, the procedure is very harsh and it is used as a last resort for certain type of cancers. It is my understanding that such procedure is warranted when the risk-reward calculation is in favor of uh, reward and death is certain if nothing is done. Assuming that one, ha one could order a bone marrow transplant just like one may order a facelift procedure, then we have the next hurdle to cross. This is a difficult hurdle because not only uh, do you need a donor willing to undergo the pro proce process of uh, donating bone marrow, but also they need to have the CCR5 mutation. Let me talk a little bit about the CCR5 mutation. The CCR5 mutation, specifically the CCR5 Delta 32 mutation, is relatively rare in the human population. This genetic mutation affects a specific gene called CCR5, which codes for a protein receptor found on the surface of immune cells. This receptor plays a crucial role in allowing certain strains of HIV to enter and infect immune cells. Individuals with two copies of the CCR5 Delta 32 mutations are called uh, homozygous uh, mutant. Typically, uh, and they have little to no CCR5 receptors on their immune cells and are highly resistant to HIV infection by strains that use the CCR5 receptor for entry. Here are some key points about the rarity of the CCR5 Delta 32 mutations. Frequency in the general population uh, is very rare. The prevalence of CCR5 Delta 32 mutation varies by uh, geographic region, and uh, ethnicity. In some populations, the mutation is extremely rare or almost absent. It is most commonly found in individuals of European descent, with the frequencies ra ranging from 1% to 10% in different European populations. Rarity in the non-European population is extreme. The CCR5 Delta 32 mutation is much less common in the populations of Africans, Asian, and indigenous descent. In these populations, the mutation is extremely rare with a frequency of typically less than 1%. Homozygous individuals are even more rare. These are the people with two copies of the mutation and are um, exceptionally rare regardless of ethnicity. This rarity, rarity is a significant barrier to using CCR5 Delta 32 as a widespread therapeutic approach for HIV. And also, I, I think that unless you have heterozygous um, uh, transplant, the opportunity for HIV to find ways to defeat CCR5 and mutate is much higher. This is my personal opinion, not a scientific opinion. So. Please take it with a pinch of salt. Again, heterozygous uh, individuals, those with uh, one copy of the mutation, uh, have some level of protection uh, but are not completely immune to the virus. They may experience slower disease progression if they become infected with HIV. The rarity of the CCR5 Delta 32 mutation limits its practical use in the therapeutic strategy for HIV. Identifying compatible donor with two copies of the mutation for bone marrow transplant is challenging due to the limited pool of suitable donors. It is further challenging because they have to agree to donate. So ongoing research um, attempts to bridge these gaps. While the CCR5 Delta 32 mutation is rare, it has been the focus of extensive research in HIV immuno, uh, immunology and gene therapy. Scientists are exploring various approaches to mimic the effects of the mutation using gene editing techniques like CRISPR and uh, uh, ZFN to render immune cells resistant to HIV. In summary, the CCR5 uh, uh, Delta 32 mutation is not sufficiently common for it to become the first line of treatment for HIV. And also bone marrow transplant is a, a regime that is uh, quite invasive. And uh, therefore, I would say that um, uh, that's the reason why generally for HIV patient, uh, it's not prescribed to have bone marrow transplant as a uh, therapy. Uh, as humans, all of us share a basic optimism. We all know that we will die someday, but we always assume that it's not today or tomorrow or day after or the next year. This helps us to go on with our life and attain great achievements and enjoy life. An extension of this would be for HIV patients to look at life and progress made in the therapy so far to improve the quality of life and extend the expectancy of life to match HIV-negative individuals' life expectancy. For instance, 
AGT 103-T aims to eliminate the need to search for a CCR5 mutated donor by modifying the patient's own T cells to express CCR5 suppression. We now have the technology to do this and put the modified CD4 T cells back into the patient's body. Uh, this is less invasive and not at all dependent on finding the rare person with the CCR5 mutation who may or may not be willing to be a donor. And on top of this, AGT-103 has done one more modification. They have a short interrupting RNA inside the CD4 uh, T cell so that even if a uh, strain of HIV got entry into CD4 T cell through other means, then the RNA will be interrupted by the short interrupting RNA and it could also provide another line of defense. At the end of the day, each of us have a choice. We look at the glass as half full or half empty. Those who constantly look at the glass as half empty are likely to find the going very tough. And those that look at glass as half full are generally full of gratitude and use what they have rather than be unhappy about what they don't. The choice is ours entirely to find inspiration in this segment that I presented today or to despair. Please let me know in the comment if you are a glass half full person. Hope you got a better insight into this often thought about and most asked question about why uh, bone marrow transplant is not a uh, method of treatment for HIV. And here in this channel, friends, I'm on a mission to bring you guys the latest inf uh, information as well as motivation and a look under the hood into how the immune system works as it relates to HIV or genomics. We are now approaching around 5,000 subscribers and I request that if you have not yet subscribed and are watching our videos and like what we present, please subscribe. It's absolutely free. And for those who are already subscribers, may I now request that you take this uh, to the next level by pressing uh, the join button and becoming a member of ShareTrek. It will help us keep the lights on for this project. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye for now.